Hello, I'm Macy, and this is my first ever book vlog. Let's get into it. We have come here today to talk about legacy, which in my opinion is probably one of the best books in the For having a little interruption, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Anyway, oh yeah, this is my Pathfinder. Got it from Target. Okay, staying focused. We're here, we all gathered here, to talk about the one and only Legacy. Legacy is probably, like I was going to say, um, one of my favorite books in the series just because we get to see the dynamic between Keith and Sophie really pop off. So I wanted to examine their relationship today in Legacy and show you why so Keith is way better than so Fitz. For those of you who would like to follow along, I have written the page numbers that I'm going to use as examples up on my whiteboard. I hope you can see it. I've never done this before, so God, I don't know what's going on. But um, if you don't have the book right in front of you, I'm also gonna be reading the quotes out aloud. Okay, so I grabbed my book and I'm on page 230 and um, it is at the top of the page. And here we go. Keith gave her another reassuring shoulder pat, but when she flung the pillow aside and buried her face in her hands, she heard him growl something like, screw it. Then his arms wrapped around her and she sank into the hug, not real realizing she was crying until she felt her tears soak into his tunic. All right, Foster. He murmured into her hair. I think we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. So let's back it up, back the T-Rex up, and try to focus on the facts for a second, okay? Yeah, before you guys go all off on me, I know I missed a word, but I don't feel like rereading it. Okay, so the part that really got me with um, that line was that Keith said, screw it. And I mean, Shannon barely ever uses that kind of language in her books. And so to have that kind of emotion and words from Keith, it really like, phew, gave me a heart attack. And I mean, just to think about what Keith's going through and how mad Fitz is at him for just even hanging around Sophie, it just shows how controlling Fitz is and why Sophie is the perfect day. Perfecto, perfect option. Okay, so the next part I'm going to read is on page 240, 240, 241 ish. And um, it's kind of right where Sophie and Keith are on the swing and they're talking about her being unmatchable and how Keith would love her for who she really is. I mean, it's not what they said, but that's how I interpret it. And then, um, Fitz comes in and is like, wait, you were unmatchable? And he's all like furious and everything. And so, hiya, Keith. No. Hiya, Fitz, Keith said, looking and sounding infinitely calmer than Sophie was feeling as he gave Fitz a quick chin nod and stood up to greet him. Though he also shot Ro a look that said, your punishment for not warning us will be legendary. Didn't know you were stopping by. Fitz snorted. Clearly. Keith smirked. Wow, someone's grumpy. Did Bianca kick your butt in Bramble again? He hates to lose. He stage whispered to Sophie. But I guess you probably already knew that about your boyfriend. Sophie had a feeling he'd use that last word intentionally and she chose not to correct him for the same reason, even though the label felt especially tenuous at the moment. So, Keith is basically protecting her from her so-called boyfriend. Ugh. And I mean, like I kind of said in the last part I read, if Fitz cannot deal with Keith hanging out with Sophie as a friend, then there's obviously issues going on here. Trust issues, whatever issues, and they don't belong. 
So, this is why self keep is just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I love them so much. Okay, number three. This is on page 387, and it's probably one of my favorite little tiny moments where you get a glimpse of Sophie crushing on Keith. And it's just amazing. So, this is Morella speaking right here. And I should go make sure Lynn hasn't renamed the Alicorns Prince Shimmer Nose and Princess Sparkle Feathers or something. I swear, if she and Keith ever get together, I'd feel super sorry for their kid. Does she like Keith? Sophie blurted out. Sophie blurted out, her face heating about a million degrees when she realized how nosy she was being. Never mind, I shouldn't have asked that. Probably not, Marla agreed, but maybe not for the reason you're thinking. And on that bombshell, I'm out. Have a good chat, you two. Miss May. Marella gave a teasing salute before she wandered off in the same direction that Lynn had gone. Aw, Sophie. She's like had to make sure that no one else likes Keith the way that she loves Keith. And I mean, at this point in the book too, I mean, her and Fitz, of course, has their, have their problems going on, but they're still in a relationship and she's worried and asking about Keith. Oh, I'm not going to make a heart. Last but not least, we're on page 531. And if I'm being completely honest, this one totally made me want to punch Fitz in the face. Like this is the one that bothered me the most out of all the quotes in the book. Um, you just don't do this. So basically Fitz is coming over to Sophie's house at Havenfield and is all like, I got you a gift. And here we go. Um, you know what, I'm gonna explain it a little bit more because I don't feel like reading this much. So Fitz is over at Havenfield with, like I, you know, I just said that, but he gives her a gift. And the gift is a picture of her and fits underneath Callus tree. And um, Sophie's wondering how he was able to so clearly get this memory out and on this picture so perfectly because Fitz doesn't have a photographic memory. How did you? She asked, still trying to understand what she was seeing. The gift looked more like a painting, but Fitz didn't paint. Did he? And the style looked familiar. Keith helped me, Fitz admitted, before Sophie's brain could get there. I started it out projecting the memory, but it didn't look quite right. Because, you know, I don't have a photographic memory like some people. So there were details missing, and parts of that were a little blurry. So I paid, let's say that one more time, paid Keith to paint over it and add in all the stuff my mind didn't get right. Wait, you paid Keith? Sophie asked. Not sure why that was the part her mind had fixated on. Fitz nodded. Otherwise, it's his gift, and it's not. This is from me, just like I'm the one who wrote the words on the back. Okay, first of all, you do not pay someone to make a gift and then call it yours. Like, sure, it's your memory, but like, you and Gabe are besties. You shouldn't have to pay him. Like, I want the old fits back. Just let that sink in. You do not pay your best friend to make a gift for your girlfriend just because you want to say that it's your gift. Uh uh. No. No. 
And, like, I feel so bad for Keith in this moment, too, because, like, you can totally tell, like, he has a crush on Sophie. We know he has a crush on Sophie. And he has to paint a picture for Sophie from Fitz of a romantic moment of Sophie and Fitz together. Like, uh-uh. That's just not okay. Okay, I'm going to end the video here before I embarrass myself even more. But, um, if you want me to make more videos, comment below, like, and subscribe. I've never done that before either. It's so weird. Um, yeah. I would love to do more Keeper videos, more edits, more whatever. More whatever. And, um, yeah. I also just got four new books from Barnes and Noble and I'm so excited to read them all. But right now I am currently reading Supernova by Marissa Mayer. Mayer? Oh, I don't know. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. And yeah. I'll see you next time. Everybody stay safe. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay smart. But keep reading. And it's my time to go. Oh, 30 stop. It's not stopping. Oh, I'm pressing.